Uh, UNECE is actually one of five regional commissions. Uh, we do represent uh, uh, North America, Europe, uh, former Soviet Union, uh, Central Asia, so we're actually a rather large uh, regional commission. But with those five commissions, we've formed a network uh, of experience sharing, of capacity building. And that's very much in the spirit of, it's very much in the context of uh, UN energy. Um, I'm going to be using the energy efficiency project as a specific example, um, but that's again in the context of this experience uh, sharing. Now our mandate in the sustainable energy division is about securing affordable and sustainable energy supply. That's a very loaded phrase. The idea of security of supply is in there. The idea of affordability. Affordability means making the investment, making sure that the end users are getting uh, energy supplies that they're able to, to, to buy. And then there's sustainability. Now when we talk about sustainability, we are thinking clearly in terms of three distinct dimensions. The first one is the societal dimension, the political dimension. It has to be seen as working to the benefit of society, helping the quality of life, uh, growth, etc. And if that doesn't work, the system falls down. The second one is the economic dimension. If you're trying to force solutions into the system that don't make economic sense, and I'm talking in terms of homo economicus there, then at some point that will fail as well. And then the third one is the environmental one, and that's what everyone's most familiar with when we speak about sustainability. Now on that specific dimension of environment, we've been talking all through yesterday and today about the target of 30% of um, uh, primary energy supply from renewables by 2030. We're making a pitch to put that renewables target in the context of a higher level target on carbon intensity. Is there some way that we can improve on the carbon intensity of the energy system by 2030? And it seems that a 30% improvement would be a, a, a target that's consistent with, with the objectives that we've set. Now, with respect to energy efficiency, um, in our commission, we're looking at energy efficiency from source all the way to use. So it's really looking at the energy efficiency of the upstream development of the primary resource the transformation, the transportation, the uh, transit, et cetera, all the way down to what we're all familiar with of energy efficiency, which is the end use energy efficiency. Now on, uh, I should actually clarify there, uh, I agree completely with the statement that Mark Hopkins made, that we're really thinking about energy productivity. We're looking at the entire system and trying to make sure that it's making the best contribution that it can make. Now, if I look specifically at end-use energy efficiency, it's always called the low-hanging fruit. This should be happening, but it's not. It's really not happening for a number of reasons, and we can list them all. In fact, I got a great email from the team working on our energy efficiency project, but it's about 17 pages, and I, I don't want to do that to you. But it is about tariff structures. It is about subsidies. It's about information of what's in the marketplace. It's about what I would call a market mismatch, I mean, what are we buying? We're buying lighting, we're buying heating, we're buying cooling, and what's being sold are BTUs and kilowatt hours. And we're trying to figure out a way to, to align those so that what the companies are selling and what's being bought is a workable marketplace. Uh, so some of the issues that we're really examining are technology transfer. We're talking about capacity building. The capacity building has to do with the uh, legal issues, the economic and financial issues in various countries. And the final topic is, is finally the show me the money topic, which is uh, the financing. How do you go through a process of financing investments in energy efficiency? So we've developed a project, and that's what our, um, the Energy Commission for Europe is all about, is kind of in the weeds doing things on the ground that have big impact, in our view, big impact. The financing energy efficiency project that's for climate change mitigation is all about identifying and developing energy efficiency projects in the target countries. We then go to those target countries and we strengthen and develop their policy framework, their capacity to take on board these projects, whether it's helping developers put together uh, the banking documents, whether it's the um, authorizations to receive these projects. These are all hugely important issues in terms of capacity building. 
And then finally, we're trying to promote investment. So one of the critical, I, I guess I would call it the gem of this project, is the development of an investment fund. It's not our investment fund. It's an investment fund set up by, funded by private sector investors who can come in and say, look, here's this opportunity. And because the framework has been put in place, we can make the investment and we can extract a return. And if we can get that to work, then we have our network with all of the other regional commissions. We can go through and share this experience. And it's a very effective way to accelerate the uptake of energy efficiency technology globally. But we're trying to use our specific uh, region as, as, a, as an example, or if you will, as a guinea pig. So that whole project and what we're about very nicely fits in with what Mark Hopkins has described in terms of these regional energy efficiency strategy approaches, and we hope to build on that. I've got a number of other comments that I could make, um, but I see my little red flag is about to go up, so I will actually stop there and thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's an interesting example. Always, we also saw it in CDM, energy efficiency projects were difficult to be financed. Yeah, they, they